everyone welcome back to my channel so last week I had the privilege of unboxing this beautiful VDS with all of you and in that video you will recall I mentioned that this week I will show you how I kitted her out so I'm quite excited to share there's quite a few goodies that are still in the post on the way but that I realized quickly is a never-ending story and so today I will show you with a little bit of a flip through and just an explanation of a bit of the logic that I follow in my planner which I use as a casual planner as you can see quite chunky already um, I'll show you how I've laid it out uh, so mark me, marking the um, first flap of, of my planner is just a little bit of, of decor um, and I'll start at the bottom of the year work my way up. Um, I didn't remember ordering this, this came from Ink and Zen and so when I went back on my invoice I realized it was a freebie which I felt um, was quite a nice affirmation. This next little item uh, marks a time in my life that come to think of it in hindsight if I reflect on it was probably the first time that the universe was telling me that I need more creative expression I'm not sure if you can hear that, that's a train coming in, so please excuse it. Um, this was something that I started when my little girl was born. Clearly she was a muse, <laughs> that was an outlet for my creative expression at the time. Um, and I'll read you what it means. It's, it, it's a little card that I used to package little creations that I was making that um, were little clips hair clips that matched outfits but I made designer ones so not a single one was ever the same my friends loved it they used to buy them to um, complement a Nachi outfit and um, they were quite popular at, at the time but like with most things that I do get into being creative that was a part-time thing and being as busy as I was at work I wasn't able to muster continuing it but the little poem that's on here that marked that journey and that was kind of just I guess the inspiration for the business I'll read it to you it says um, it's a Lily May ribbon uh, ribbons and crystals and beautiful lace sparkles the sun sunshine of the most special face from bubbles and snowflakes and fairy tale twirls on a butterfly journey to fancy white pools, a lily may treasure so uniquely designed to celebrate a beauty of the most special kind. I just loved um, at the time with some of my friends having also had babies and my sister having hers and um, um, her children are my godchildren and uh, her little girl also, we used to love dressing them up. I wasn't a particularly a broody person at the time that I fell pregnant with my little girl but when um, when she was born, I found myself possibly making up for some um, doll playing that I didn't do in my younger days. So um, this was just the way in which I packaged that item at the time in my life. And um, because I love it so much, I figured I'll keep it and I'll probably continue doing something similar with it at some stage in my life. But I quite like the decorative way that this... Um, complements my planner with and it's also a nice little memory and uh, treasure of a time in my life that I felt quite in flow with my creative expression. This next little combo <laughs> is um, a combination between something that I got from Crafty Green as well as cloth and paper. Um, I love the etching on these little bookmarks um, and particularly layering it with some different colours. Um, this is from our very first cloth and paper uh, order uh, and uh, this month I've been going with a little bit of a Halloween type theme. The typical Halloween um, decor and clip art that most people would associate with it is not really my thing. Um, I mean I love looking through them and seeing how quirky and cute some of them are but I'm more of a Lux, um, what would you call it? I like simplicity, I like sophistication and simplicity and that seems to be the look and feel of the cloth and paper brand. Um, but then I also do have um, a few other likes and um, preferences that I like to lace my, my, my planner out with and so 
this month I decided in celebration of Halloween that I would um, also go with some form of a theme. I actually created my own theme um, which is a more twilighty look because I really really enjoyed how the black and white actually complemented my preference in style and aesthetic. So you can see that will probably be prevalent throughout as, um, as I page through this, which kind of starts over here marked by this dashboard. And um, at the time that I saw this on, on, on Etsy, and it's also by Ink and Zen, I was very excited because I felt that the dashboards that I had created, and let me see if I can show you so long by going a little further ahead. There you can, you can see that I also went with either black flowers on a white background or white flowers on a black background um, with a little bit of a twilighty look to them. Uh, I designed those and they're available on my Etsy, um, in my Etsy site. But this was kind of the theme that I was going for, for my, for my planner. I printed them on a shimmery page, um, light card stock. And when I saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, that would go perfectly with it. Now, marking the opening of my planner, um, you would ask yourself what this, the significance of having reflect on it. And it's not only a pretty picture, it does actually have significance for me. Um, I am not somebody that uses my planner only to GSD, get stuff done. <laughs> um, my planner is a little bit of a um, reflection haven for me. Um, I'm a deep reflector and my brain is not the neurotypical brain, something that you'll still probably get to learn about me throughout my videos um, and consequently the amount um, of information that I sometimes need to, to process because of everything that comes into it requires of me to sometimes catch up with myself and um, as a result uh, a healthy reflection routine has been the only way that I've been able to slow myself down to catch up with myself. In this pocket I in this little pouch which I got from Color Cafe I keep these little tabs. Now not everybody likes these is what I've learned subsequently and I think I understand why it's because they sometimes actually fall off and I do still need to find a creative way around how to keep them on but for somebody that just started in the planning um, playground or in the planning world it's actually a whole world it's a wonderland in fact for somebody that just started in it I love 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 the flexibility that this gives me. Um, the ones that I seem to be using the most are these from Color Cafe and you'll see throughout my planner how it is that I have deployed them <laughs> or purposed them. Um, these are the months. I just love the writing on it. I don't know if you can see. I love these because they give me the flexibility whilst it is that I'm still figuring out what my layout and my planner should be to simply pop them off and push them onto another spot in the planner. Um, I find creative ways of making them stick by using little paper clips and things which also then starts adding to the decoration and I quite like actually the flexibility that that gives me. So I just love these. Crafty Brina is so creative. This set is every month in, in a year and then this set and what I did is I actually tried to kind of keep them together with some logic. Well, some me logic. It might not be the same logic for most others. Um, and the pouch that I got from Color Cafe seems to be quite useful for housing them. And the reason why I carry it with me, you would ask yourself, why are you not carrying stickers in your pouch? I do have spots for that. These ones are decorative. And what I find useful about them is sometimes there's a section in your planner that you just want to use for something specific and want to be able to flick too quickly. You don't necessarily need to give it an actual label. I'm creative like that and I change things up quite a bit. And so whilst I am in that space and still kind of figuring out what works for me and what doesn't, these are so, so useful for that. And they're really pretty. And they're unobtrusive. You know where they are and what they look like and how it is that your fingers need to glide to them to be able to take you there in your plan. And so I just love them. So these I got from Color Cafe um, and Crafty Brina. And I also got this little cute pouch from Color Cafe. And I put them in there and house it in here, which is quite useful because I can flick to it very quickly when I need something. 
Okay, then in the front part of my planner, I also have this little guy and some stickers. These stickers is I still have items here that actually don't belong here. Let me take them out. Put them where they belong now. Okay, so this is a little cutting board. Um, sometimes I need to um, cut things up for my journal, which goes in the back. Um, and it's also a nice just um, mat to be able to kind of press on when you do have a few things that you need to write on and your surface is not affording for it. Something that I have to say about this planner is that I took the off-the-shelf version that doesn't have um, the hardened cover. Um, I don't know really what it, what it is that you call it, but um, this helps with that. And definitely in my next version, I will ask for, they do have an option where you can ask them to put something, a little um, tightening or hardening into the front cover I don't really know what you would call it but this seems to work for me I actually quite like using it um, because it, it does give it that extra structure um, and it just is a very useful nifty cutting board for the way in which I use my, my planner I don't only use it for functional I also use it for creativity and in the back where my journal comes which I'll show you when we get to that part I do sometimes non-structured planning and non-structured -stru um, reflection by just junk journaling or um, playing in my bullet journal and then when you want to cut things up or you want to make things fit this is quite useful for that so I use my Cricut cutter on it and I use my tweezer for stickering and Nails don't seem to do it, and you won't believe it, but this one I got some, I got in one of our local chemists, um, and I think that it's really pretty, and of course, rose gold, <laughs> and it slips on here quite nicely and stays there, which I also found to be quite decorative, so I decided to keep it there rather than have it separate with all of my stationery, because too often you need to kind of work your way um, around your planner with stickers, um, and I love that because it's just relaxes me and having my tweezer at hand and also having it as a nice little quick grab reference to open things with. I love it. It works like a charm. Okay, moving on to this next part um, as I head into my goals sections. Um, this is kind of just a front of mind call out for myself. This is the VDS flap. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of a catch-all um, dashboard um, marked by this paper clip where I can just quickly slip things into and you can see the rose gold theme throughout. <laughs> very much love rose gold, very much love pearlescent white. And um, you can see that I've used this a lot, a lot. So this card is also from Cloth and Paper. I really like this card. I kind of keep it here in the middle. Of this particular section where I place everything because when you start getting into your planner and your planning routine there's always that collection of things that we don't like doing and nothing is permanent is just a little bit of a mental calibration for me to remind myself that you're always gonna have that and just GSD get stuff done get the stuff that you don't like doing a lot of done first so that there's some time to move on to the others. And what I do is I run around with my catch-all planner. Is anything that needs to go and get into my inbox for processing, I kind of slip in here and then I go and structure it for where it needs to be. Okay, so now in this next section starts the layout of how my brain works and I have structured my planner to speak to that. This is um, also an etched dashboard. I think I got this one from um, Crafty Brina. Both Color Cafe and Crafty Brina do, do the etching, so sometimes I might have it wrong. Um, this one says, sometimes you just have to jump out the window and grow wings along the way by Ray Bradbury. I really love that. Butterflies are a thing for me, um, which I'll talk to in another video <laughs> altogether. I don't want to get all sentimental over here. Um, but this laces my kind of annual at a glance view this is really just a reference point for me I really love this also got this from color cafe it's printed on vellum um, 
like the fact that the edge dashboard doesn't kind of construct or obstruct um, my view of it and sometimes you need a quick reference to to your dates um, my brain is very much a right to left thinking left to right execution brain and so you'll see throughout my planner that it has been structured accordingly um, and this is how it works so first section goes into my goals and my goals really kind of takes an annual overview now what I've done and the reason why I've done it is because the last three to seven years of my life is an interesting story and probably a story in itself um, but in that time I've learned quite a few very important things about myself I've learned about my mental and emotional resilience and just what limits I can um, um, push it to it's kind of scares me for <laughs> what I'm capable of sometimes um, in terms of uh, just how much I can handle but at the same time I also learned um, a lot about my passions and my loves in life I decided to lay out my planner in a manner that is going to place forefront of focus those things that should be priority in my life so my goal section my annual plans all start with me myself and I and what I am dreaming wanting to accomplish at a personal level and my personal health and wellness and that then would become the first part of what my annual plan looks like for the section in my planner and um, followed by my work annual plans and and all the other annual plans that I would typically have in here so it starts with my goals you can see how it is that I've kind of purposed these cute little tabs um, and this is just the attitude that I want to remind myself of that I can and I will and that's the end of the story no compromises that's kind of the mental um, motivation that I need to keep forefront of mind uh, and I think that this is just a really nice way of kind of marking the section in my in my planner this is printed on vellum from color cafe and these are from Ink and Zen and I just love the texture. I don't know if you can see that, but let me maybe take it out and show it to you up close. The texture of these printed cardstock is amazing. If ever you want some textured layers in your planner, I highly recommend that you go and have a look at what Ink and Zen have available. It's stunning. It just gives off the vibe of quality which is what I love so much okay so in this next section then and there you can see some of my twilighty theme coming through another etched dashboard this one I think is from um, either ink and zen or color cafe and this is where then my personal annual plans are so I'm in the process of experimenting with a new template for my um, annual plans uh, which works for me. I use it in my workspace and I am now transferring my data into this. I designed this. Uh, it looks like this. Basically on the left hand side over here you will have um, what it is that you are wanting to achieve. Um, your tracker in the middle and on the right hand side what it is that you are reminded of for what you want to accomplish. Now this is kind of working off of my annual planning as well. My annual planning has got a similar um, approach to it. What this one, what this one does is this becomes my tracker. So I would have an annual plan that would have what it is that I want to accomplish on the far right hand side, very similar to this on the left hand side, also similar to this, the way I need to show up to be able to do that. And in the middle, what my focus would be. So what do I want to accomplish? What do I need to do to accomplish it and how must I show up on a day to day basis to be able to accomplish it? So my tracking system, I've decided needed to align to that and my previous way of tracking all of my health and wellness um, objectives did not work for me. It was very messy and I've got a combination between that and my electronics because I wear this beauty which is a garment that my husband bought for me that was a lifesaver and being able to um, get back up to a reasonable place of helping my brain to just slow down and shut down in the evening so that I can get some decent sleep so sleep hygiene is something that I needed to train myself back into for a decent night's sleep and that's a story that I'll tell on another day. So because I track most of it over here, all I really need is just a little bit of a visual indication that helps me in my reflections to see the trend. 
um, on paper, an analog way of just kind of connecting myself to my targets on a day-to-day -day basis as I reflect on how did the day go and how am I starting the day and do I have enough body battery to get going through what I need to get going through, where do I need to build in what to be able to get me through the day and to be meaningfully functional and productive. So this is the new tracking system I will show you, I'll dedicate in the H section of Alphabet of Planning, Health and Wellness Tracking. What I love about this is um, I use this little um, etched card to kind of mark this section in my planner because it's something that I go to every morning. This um, is something that I got from Sticky Monster Co actually and what I love about it is this little ribbon. Uh, it has significance in that it's soft and it's a color that I that I absolutely love. It's a mauve kind of pinkish, dusty pink color. Um, and the soft texture is a reminder for me to be kind and softer with myself. I can be quite hard on myself. And to remember that health wellness is a fluid process that just requires a dedicated plan, persistence and patience most of all because I can be quite impatient with myself. So this deco card and this dashboard which says self-love is befitting to mark this section and all of my trackers would be typically in here. I would only typically have two of these. Um, I designed it like this because I love being able to kind of see it on one page. Um, I like the fact that it can open up. I know not many people do enjoy that um, because if you think about it, this section is not something that you're going to generally be writing on a lot. I would have the days of the month kind of plotted along the top end over there and then adjacent to each of these which has just enough space for all of them I would then just go and place my little dot in the m month of the day that well the day or the spot that my tracking affords for so I never really need to write on this side which makes this pragmatic I do need to write over here and that would be filled out once off um, and stay top of mind as a reminder of what it is that you're trying to accomplish with your tracking so it just makes for very effective reflection right now that marks that section this next section is the section in which everything that relates to my goals, my dreams and my annual plans is kept and um, that's why it's marked by a dashboard that says flourish. I got this from Color Cafe as well. Um, this is the me section. This is where my goals and my dreams start. All of my um, annual plans are integrated so I do have um, my work and my personal life in here. The reason for that for me is because I found myself in a place where because I compartmentalized them to the extent that I did, I ended up sometimes in a rabbit hole where work trumped most of the time and I didn't run an effective integrated routine where I would have mental breaks from work chunks and being able to get to my family stuff to the extent that I felt like I had enough time for myself and my family also and that puts a resentment in you if you allow that train to run away with you so this planning method of integrating things works better for me but I do need to keep forefront of mind the things that are important to me um, what I love about this dashboard is it makes me think of me and this is my favorite flower I don't know if you can see that but it is a moth orchid it is a moth orchid I feel like I'm showing you everything except what's actually on here the lighting is not too hot either. there we go maybe that works a bit better in any case it's a moth orchid if it doesn't show very nicely in this video I'll try and put a picture down on it so that you can see Moth Orchid is my ultimate, ultimate, ultimate favorite flower in the whole wide world. And so this spoke to me when I saw it in her shop. Of course, on the left hand side, I do this because I do right to left thinking and left to right execution. Action for me to track things like Happy Mail, subscriptions, and as I get um, goodies in the post and get an indication of what they were it helps me to just also keep some of those invoices together in this cute little folder that I got from journal Sam. so this section kind of marks that 
um, it's just the in front of everything kind of place where I capture everything. On this right hand side then starts my right to left process. So think about it, right to left thinking, left to right execution. The right to left thinking starts with an annual plan that goes into you need to do your monthly monitoring and then that goes into your weekly kind of processes and then from left to right in your execution that's how you will execute. But if you go through your process of how it is that you action your inbox and process your inbox on a month to month and a week to week basis you do need to tie it back to your annual plan and so the left to right execution does look at the annual plan first what it is in the month that i need to kind of get going get done how did i break up all of those goals from a monthly perspective and then on a weekly basis how can i go and place them into a meaningful week that would be productive and i use the hognichi method this is also from Ink and Zen, that same textured kind of tabs. And what I really love about her tabs, I think I did mention it before, is that she's got this very cute, very nifty way of actually lacing the tabs with, it's almost like a sticker kind of a setup that both strengthens it, but also becomes quite useful for me to be able to put some sticker labeling on and then pull it back off again. Um, I think that that's a very nifty touch. Um, because I like, because I like the Color Cafe tabs, I placed it over it, keeping it together with this cute little paper clip that I got with one of my orders from Notebook Therapy, um, and then just another little journal card, um, which says "Be 100% unapologetically authentic." It is the only way that you will find yourself surrounded by those who love you for it. And on a day-to-day -day basis, one of my mantras that I need to remind myself of. Um, is um, centered around setting healthy mental and emotional boundaries and I think that this just helps with that little reminder so here goes the annual layout and plan I spoke about this a little bit earlier here you can see one of my personal ones this one's a bit messy I need to kind of rewrite it but and, and I do rewrite them over and over so I print this and a normal paper as I'm processing and kind of doing my thinking and plotting down and then what I do is once I've got it in a nice and decent state for the month I print it on something a little bit harder in cardstock and I come and place it back here and that then kind of accompanies me as I'm doing my weekly planning so this is my template if you like it you can comment below and I'll place it somewhere where you can access it but um, I kind of designed this to to work for me so here's my process, right to left thinking, left to right execution. What do I want to accomplish? These are the three top things that I want to accomplish by 2024. What do I need to do to be able to get that right? And how do I need to show up? What are the things that can hold me back from achieving it that I need to change up and be forefront of mind on? And as I reflect throughout my day-to-day, month-to-month, week-to-week, um, I make sure that how it is that I have shown up is keeping this forefront of mind. Yeah, you can see that I need to balance my time better and that's why I started going with integration. I need to manage mental and emotional boundaries well and I need to commit to um, few focused healthy anchoring habits and routines and integrate my creative expression and everything that it is that I do in order for me to feel whole and healthy and like I can self-actualize without it being dependent on what anybody else enables or gives me to do. Here's the monthly section in it. I keep track of birthdays. Um, also got this, I think, from Color Cafe, and I just love how that laces over it. Um, this monthly section I don't really use that much, and I'll probably change it up uh, because I try to keep things simple, and I want one place to focus and not have to go and transfer from one to the next to the next to the next. Too much transferring is also unproductive, in my opinion. So I try to keep it simple and just enough for effective reflection and that thing kind of leads me into the weekly working section which is where I keep these little functional spots on this side it would be things that are just inspirational and decorative but on the other side you will see the stickies and the note flags most of these come from cloth and paper and ink and zen um, and then um, this from um, let's make it sparkle quite like these little micro dots I think I'm gonna get myself some more of them and then these cute little stickers come from notebook therapy and I'll do a separate notebook therapy unboxing because I think it's worthy showing you what the beauty is in her creations I've also got my own um, bullet journal range that's come out and 
I very much love the aesthetics of hers even though it's not really my style I do enjoy um, using her items to do some of my bullet journaling and um, really like what she's built up in her business and really enjoy working with her items um, so these are kept here as little stickers that I can access for my own journaling and whatever it is that is my flavor of the week or the month I place in here and then it's close by because as I go and do my processing of my month and my annual plan into my weeklies which is this section let me show you I do my Hobonichi planning over here also a whole new world that I have discovered that I'm still learning how to do properly um, but love 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 the method and have decided that this is what works for me right now I'm gonna continue experimenting so I've got these little inserts that I'm using this insert is from um, let me just quickly see plan to create got this from plan to create I love this because it's got time on the left hand side so I can kind of section and block out what it is that's work related what it is it's not and I as you can see I start out with like a pencil and plan and then I go Hobonichi um, one of my favorite inspirers <laughs> in the Hobonichi world um, is Helen from the Coffee Monster Co. I uh, just love her story. I think that she is such an inspirational young lady and I'm learning so much about the Hobonichi method from her to the effect that I've actually uh, ordered myself a Hobonichi for this year so that I can use the backdated pages to practice in, um, see how it works for me for the balance of the year before I get myself a 2023 one. So this section kind of marks then what flows from there. So Hobonichi gives me the opportunity to see my week on a page. I need to see helicopter view and then kind of chunk my time into it and ensure that I have balanced all factors because of the balance. <laughs> I've balanced all factors in a day and across the week I can see that I am making time for everything that I need to make time in. And through my trackers at the beginning of the week I can then see what is it that is dropping off a little bit that I need to work in and then I can adapt along the way but then when you go into the daily section and a lot of people do use the dailies I find myself at that point getting to a place where there's too much transferring and particularly because I do have a corporate job and in that corporate job I use my electronic calendar to have the micro details in it so I don't feel the necessity to replicate that I feel the need to chunk and reflect as I plan and then to go and section off those sections of work that I have placed in my Hobonichi into what it is that the focus of those items are going to be in my electronic calendar and over here I instead of having daily planners I've got meeting planners so how I use this section is and I designed this template as well how I use this section is what I know is going to be elements that I need to cover I will create my, my meeting log for, uh, whether I've got the meeting set in calendar already or not. Uh, if not, it won't have a date, obviously, but if it is, then it will have the date, it will have who it is it's going to be attending. Because you often find yourself in that place where you remember, I need to take this up with so-and-so, I need to take that up with so-and-so. You forget to take it up with them because you placed it somewhere in a notebook. And in that notebook, you then end up paging relentlessly to find it at the time that you are meeting with that person, only to sometimes not even find it. So what I find over here is this little meeting planner helps me to just keep it all together. As I go through the week and I know I need to take this up with my boss and I need to take that up with person reporting into me. You kind of collect them in here and with your next meeting that you've got with them, um, you are able to kind of set it up. It also helps you build up, you know, when is there enough for an actual formal meeting and when is it just warranting a call. Uh, keep them together and then I chunk them. So as I've done, most of these are the blank pages, but as I've done a week, I would plonk the week together. And as you can see over here, you'll take your notes. Sometimes I go to the back of the page to continue with the note taking. But your actions that come out of this then are kind of plotted over here. You can immediately decide on a responsible person in the deadline date, which makes your meetings more productive with your, with your colleagues and whoever it is that you're engaging with, uh, be they personal or in the workplace. And then 
I transfer this back into my to-do list which is now getting down to the very micro level stuff and that is your actions and I do use the GTD method so yeah you can see how that section is marked off I've got this cute little um, to-do checklist which I also got from I think it's I can't remember where I got this from what I'll do is I'll link it down below or I'll check and I will place it in a little descriptor at the top. I um, really like these. Um, when, I when I saw them, I didn't really yet think about what the pragmatic layout of my calendar was going to be. But what I like about these is that they're nice and sturdy and they can kind of help me very quickly flip over the big chunks of what I've already placed in my, in my planner. So um, on this side um, is where the lists come. So all of my lists go and make their way in here. So once the meetings are done, I transfer it into here. And this little template is from May Paper Co. Very useful. She um, has got a very pragmatic way of laying out the get things done um, method. Um, I don't use all of it because again, I find that there's too much transferring. And once you've kind of learned to do the processing of your inbox, it kind of becomes second hand button you don't need this anymore and you end up collapsing some steps it's not advisable to collapse all steps because there's also merit in the reflection process that goes with this which helps you to mentally process what you need to get done so all i do is i get it back in here and then as i go back to my weekly routine of hobonichi planning and my reflecting on my annual actions and activities and trackers Kind of plan it back into Hobonichi and so the cycle keeps going. What I'll do is I'll create a separate video to explain that when the time is right. And then in this back section is kind of like a little note section. This is where I place my inspiration. Um, this dashboard again a little bit of a layering thing going on here. Um, this one is from Crafty Brina. This Accomplished Magnificent Things is from Ink and Zen. Just love the layover that it's giving. And then this is just a blank page that has some shimmer on it, which I liked for what this effect of the layering was giving with these neutral tones. This is in my notes section. Um, then of course my dashboard from um, Ink and Zen, um, where all my inspirational thoughts are kind of harbored and kept together. And if you page over, you'll see this kind of reminds me of me. Um, most of where I go and find my inspiration is on Pinterest and Etsy and um, Instagram and YouTube. And as I do my research, sometimes I'm not somebody that that ever struggles with ideas. In fact, I get overwhelmed with the amount of ideas I have that I then want to go and put into action and have too little time in a day to do so this is the place where I keep all of them and those that I feel are worthy exploring and kind of jumping down habit holes to make real I then jump into so to give you a little bit of a sneak peek that is going to be my first ever sticker set release and when I am ready with that I will give you a little bit more insight into how I went about designing and putting that together I experiment with that next I'm just waiting for my Cricut machine to come which is an exciting new discovery but yeah, this is where I kind of keep all of my little lists and so forth. And that brings me to the back of my planner, which is also a little bit of a decorative story. Um, what I normally keep in the back of my planner is my reflection journal. Here you can see my little card lace, lacing the back again. I love this flap. I just love this. Um, I will definitely have it again with the customized planner. Here is how that works for me. So my bullet journal goes in here and it actually closes up perfectly and I've got just enough space for everything. I don't keep every single month of the year in my planner, it doesn't make sense to me. So once I'm done with all of the meetings of this month, I kind of take them out into a separate storing spot. Most of the time I actually do spend the time to quickly snap them and kind of go and place them into an online archive where I can access those meeting notes again if ever I do need to but I rarely find myself needing to access notes for longer than three months back so because most of the actions would have led into the next things that needed to get done um, you also have the option of recording meetings at work and so it's really futile stacking up paper for the sake of it in the back of my journal is where it is that I do my reflective um, journaling. This is just my fun journal. This is my place where I can write anything goes. This is my anything goes journal. I can't wait for my release, but this is what I found from 
uh, notebook therapy. I just really, really love this cute little blossom bunny. Um, show you how it is that I use this. This was my first spread that I did. It's kind of a junk journal spread, but with an affirmation. It's got the quote, hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is like a winged bird that cannot fly. That is something that a friend of mine in standard five, what grade is that? Um, grade seven, before you go to high school, wrote me in these little books that we used to have at that time when you had a practice that when you go, or like a ritual that when you go to, to high school, you get your friends to write in a book for you some inspirational message and he was um, a friend that sat next to me in one of my classes and he wrote me this and it was so profound at the time I don't know why this stuck in my mind but today more so than ever I find it very befitting for this new chapter that I'm going into I think for a while I have put my dreams on hold and forgotten about this and so it marks the opening of my journal um, this next one was a spread that I did with my godchild and again the inspiration of my children in my life <laughs> and this one was one that my little girl and I did she did one page I did another page as we were waiting for my husband to come out of a pretty serious surgery in any case I can take you through my bullet journal on another day but yeah it fits so nicely in the back over here because this is my catch-all journal and you kind of want all of your things close by and it's got enough things inside of it for me to be able to do a spread in um, I carry it with me over here the back over here I've just got a few decor pieces from respective places the likes of Crafty Brina, Cloth and Paper, Journal Say and um, um, Ink and Zen uh, and they just kind of make out the back over here in a decorative fashion as and when I want I change it up in accordance to my mood um, and it just becomes a nice little spot where you can play so I don't feel like pink then I take this one out place it somewhere else and put another one in and so you keep finding these cute little bookmarks and sometimes I use them in here too so love these little decor items. The back over here are some stickers from Chunel Say. I felt that these were befitting. I'm an absolute coffee lover. Um, my favorite thing next to planning. <laughs> Tell my husband he's my favorite thing in the whole wide world. And then comes all the others. And then this one says suddenly in this life which I felt was quite befitting because this discovery of this world of planning suddenly this stage in my life is interesting um, and I'm very grateful that I have discovered it. so I felt that that was befitting to have over there let me put this back right then of course my pen this one is um, Swarovski crystal rose gold uh, and this one I can't even remember what shop I got it from but they work like a bomb let me put this back and close this baby up and show you what it looks like so it works quite well and I'm gonna close it up it still fits nice and chunky planner I know it's not everybody's thing um, I will probably replace my bullet journal section with the Hobonichi still kind of figuring out how I'm going to work that I love 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 the Hobonichi method um, maybe I'll make a separate video about that at some point at this point in time I do find it quite useful for my chunking. I'm just working out a way to not be regurgitating the same stuff over and over because that's not efficient. Um, I don't like planning like that, uh, but I do value um, reflective planning. And sometimes you do need to do a little bit of retrospect. It's not pragmatic to think that you're always going to be proactively thinking ahead. Um, so still finding my style and all of that. But yes, that is how I get it out my beautiful VDS and as you can see I've kind of already placed pen marks on it I don't know how to remove that if anybody does know please let me know but I've just decided she's got character already thank you for watching everybody in the next section I'll probably deep dive a little bit into some of these new methods that I had found um, next in the alphabet is B and I'll probably go down the rabbit hole of brain-based planning. I am an industrial psychologist um, and 
the brain has always been something that has been super fascinating to me uh, how peopling works how our brains work and how it is that we structure our plans accordingly uh, i thought that that might make for an interesting episode because i didn't really see any uh, online so i figured let me go down that little journey um, and see what it is that i can find of interest that i can share with you thank you for watching and hope to see you next week i hope that you have a nice day